Okay, now we're going to talk about uh, Hipparchus scale, the absolute and apparent luminosity of stars on the Hipparchus scale. So this is called uh, MB. Uh, a lot of times uh, it's called absolute visual magnitude MB. Its equation is negative 2.5 log absolute luminosity of a star over absolute luminosity of the sun plus 4.83. Uh, the apparent visual magnitude, MB, is negative 2.5 log apparent luminosity of a star divided by apparent luminosity of the sun minus 26.74. Eventually, as we are doing uh, the video, and we're going to do a subsequent video of this too, you will realize why and how this uh, constants 4.83 and the negative 26.74 come about, okay? This is the absolute luminosity of a star on the Hipparchus scale. So let's see how it works. If a star is exactly the same luminosity as the sun, what is the, the absolute visual magnitude of that star? If this over this ratio is equal to one, absolute luminosity over absolute luminosity of the sun is one, what's MV? Then you're going to have negative 2.5 log of 1 plus 4.83. This one is going to be 0, and it's just going to be 4.83. So any star that is as bright as our sun, including our own sun, the absolute visual magnitude of that star will be 4.83 on the Hipparchus scale. So that if the luminosity, absolute luminosity, over absolute luminosity of sun is 10. If there's another star that's 10 times brighter, what's going to happen? MV is going to be negative 2.5 log of 10 plus 4.83. Log of 10 is just 1. So 4.83 minus 2.5. So it's like doing like that. So it's going to be 2.33. So what's happening? The way that the Hipparchus scale is meant is that the more left you get, so if we draw this on the number line, the sun gets a 4.83. The more left you get, the brighter the star becomes. So if there's another star that's a 2.33 on that uh, Hipparchus scale, then it's 10 times brighter than the sun. What if there's another star 100 times brighter? What happens? MV is equal to negative 2.5 log of 100, right, plus 4.83, and then what is that equal to? So uh, log of 100, that's equal to 2, 2 times negative 2 and a half, negative 5, negative 5 plus 4.83, okay? So that becomes negative uh, 0.17, right? Negative 0.17. In astronomy, we learned that the Hipparchus scale is meant so that every unit of 5 stands for a multiple of 100. So this is basically the proof of it, the mathematical proof. So if we go over to, let's say this is 0, a little bit to the left of 0, there will be a star that is 100 times brighter than the sun. This one is 10 times brighter. And the Hipparchus scale, absolute visual magnitude will be negative 0.17. Five units to the left of the sun. Okay? If we go five more units, okay, over here, what's that going to be? Well, it's going to be a star that's uh, uh, 100 times 100. 100 times 100, it'll be 10,000, right? So it will be over here, log of 10,000 plus... 4.83, okay? So that means the ratio of the luminosities is 10,000. So log of 10,000, what is that? 10,000 is 10 to the power of four, right? 100 times 100. So this will be what? 10 to the power of four, so it's four. Four times negative two and a half, negative 10 plus 4.83. So you see that's five units and another five units. And so what is that? Negative 5.17, right? on the Hipparchus scale, and that'll be a star that is um, 10,000 times as bright. About the brightest star you can have is around a million, 
Okay, so there'll be a star here, a million. So that means we put a million here. Log of a million is a six, right? Six times negative two and a half will be negative uh, 15. So that's five units, five units, five units, that'll be negative 10.17. So a star that is a million times brighter than the sun will be negative 10.17. Same thing, we can go the other direction, right? If there's a star that is 10 times dimmer than the sun, then 100 times dimmer and so on, right? What's gonna happen? 10 times dimmer. 10 times dimmer will be negative 2.5 log of 1 tenth plus 4.83. Log of 1 tenth is negative 1. And then the negative and the negative become 2.5 plus 4.83. So that's going to be 313.17, So you go two and a half this way, you get a star that is one tenth as bright. So you get six, uh, 7.33. Uh, 100 times as bright, you get 100. And then there'll be uh, positive five, right? So every 100 times dimmer than the sun, it's going to be five, 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 okay? Every 10 times dimmer than the sun, two and a half, two and a half, two and a half, two and a half, okay? So if you go all the way to uh, five units this way, 9.83, then you have a star that is 100th, the brightness of the sun, and then another five will be 14.83, you have a star that is 1,000th, one uh, ten thousandth. So one ten thousandth, the brightness of the sun, just like this was ten thousand times brighter than the sun, this is one ten thousandth. And then you go over this way, five more, 19.83, one millionth, one millionth of the brightness of the sun. So it'll be 15 units that way, 15 units this way, okay? And you'll get million and one millionth. How does the apparent luminosity work? Pretty much the same way, okay? Okay? So the way that the apparent luminosity uh, functions, you have the first part is exactly the same. Apparent luminosity over apparent luminosity of the sun, negative 26.74. So since the sun is the brightest object in the sky, it's the most brightest looking object, what does our sun get? It gets the most negative on the scale, the most to the left. So if there's another star whose apparent luminosity over the apparent luminosity of the sun is one, what is it that gonna be? Any star that looks just as bright as the sun is gets a negative 26.74 but there is no other star other than our sun that looks just as bright as the sun the sun overshines every other thing all other stars look much 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 dimmer okay so if there's a star that let's say looks one millionth the brightness of the sun so what is that going to be a pair times that 15. okay <clears throat> and that one becomes what? Um, around negative 11, right? Uh, is there such a star? Actually not, okay? The apparent luminosity of the brightest star that we know of is actually Sirius A. Sirius A. The apparent luminosity on the Hipparchus scale is negative 1.4. So even this is not much. We have to go... Uh, 15 this way and another 10 okay brightest looking star on the Hipparchus scale and in the sky is negative 1.4 so basically it's around here Sirius A so what is that it's 10 units to the left of this negative 1 okay for every 10 there is a what for every 5 there's a hundred for 10 there is what? A 10,000, right? Okay, so this one is going to be 1 10,000th as bright as this. So between here and here, it's going to be 1 10,000th, right? 
So this one is one ten thousandth as bright as this. This is one millionth the brightness of this. So how many times brighter is this than th that? We'll just follow the zeros. You'll say a million and then add one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So this one, okay, three, one, two, three, like that, one, two, three, like that, okay? So three, six, nine, that's billion, okay? One, ten billion, okay? So we can say the sun is ten billion times brighter looking than the brightest sky. Uh, star in the sky, which is Sirius A. 10 billion times brighter looking. Its apparent luminosity is 10 billion times bigger. Other stars in the sky are going to look even dimmer, okay? You keep going this way, they keep getting dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. Okay, so for example, Polaris, which is our North Star, is a positive 2 on the Hipparchus scale. A lot of the visually bright stars in the sky are like around a negative uh, half, zero, half. They look very bright in the sky. When you get to one, one and a half, two, they're a little dimmer to see. You have to go to a good dark place to see them. When you get to three, four, it gets really hard to see it. Okay? The positive six is called the naked eye limit. Anything Further, more positive than that, you need binoculars or telescopes in order to be able to see them, okay? So now you see how the Hipparchus scale works and that it is a logarithmic scale and it works in an inverse way. The more left you get, the brighter the object is or the more left you get, the brighter the object appears, okay? In the next video, you'll see the relationship of distance, how distance plays with this equation and we will further develop our analysis of these equations. Thank you very much.